So what happened in the case? Well, the case is fairly straightforward. Henry Ford made a couple major mistakes. He didn't say the right things. He didn't say the magic words. And now you might be able to see why a court might be inclined to rule against such a person who even early in his career, before some of those events unfolded, had a very particular view of what companies should and shouldn't do. So he was sued by his investors, and they won. Now, they didn't win on enjoining the Rouge River plant. Why? That was a business judgment. Right? He decided that he wanted to spend money to build a factory. That's fine. The factory was meant to produce cars to make money. But to lower the price of his automobiles in order to put more money in his workers' pockets and to give people a car at a lower rate without, in fact, with the stated purpose of making less profits, that's the outer limits of corporate social responsibility. Right? We can't actually go against shareholder profits deliberately and without their authorization. So the, course do, the case does stand for that principle. It's a very old case. We still have that principle although it has been tempered in a lot of ways. So question, what could Ford have done or said differently that might have changed the case? Brett. If he said he was lowering the price of the market, he could buy it and therefore make more money, buy more people buying it, servicing their vehicles. Right. You might have said our profit margins per unit might go down, but our overall unit will go up. Law of uh, you know, increasing economics to scale. He could have made economic arguments that this would have helped. Yeah, Joe. You just pointed to his, his profits for the past 10 years doing just what you said, reducing costs, volume goes up, and then his, uh, the cost for maintenance and extra parts goes up. Goes to the All you have to do is point to like, this is what I've been doing, it's been working. Right. If you didn't have to say anything else, you just would like this to work, and you should let me do this. Now, he probably couldn't have also said this with his investors, but maybe, maybe he was going to run the Dodge Brothers out of business, too. Now, I don't know if there's been any actual evidence that this happens, but there are actually laws on the books now. They were not at the time that you cannot undercut your competitor for the purpose of running them out of business. It's an antitrust violation of the Robinson-Patman Act, which was not in place at the time. And I'm not so sure that there's any evidence that really happens. But he could have, at this point, I think, said, I'm lowering the price of my car, so no one ever buys a Dodge again. When they go out of business, we'll jack the prices up. So we'll have a monopoly, right? Long-term profits. But he didn't talk about profits at all. In fact, he talked about giving the money away. Now, could he have done other things with the money? Now, at the River Rouge plant, he built a hospital for his injured workers. Is that allowed? So where's our plant? So these guys, right, are African Americans who are thankfully earning more, but thanklessly um, getting injured by uh, hot products. They have a, a hospital on here, so free health care, thanks to the generosity, the benevolence of Henry Ford. Is he allowed to give money to build a hospital at the River Rouge plant? Yeah, doesn't that be a business decision? I mean, the increase in the welfare. I mean, it actually happened. Well, the Chiefs just did that like two years ago. Yes. It's it's well, you know, it was, it was a bit of a trick question because the answer is it depends, again, how it's framed. If it is to increase productivity, if the answer is I'm building this hospital so that my workers can get back to work in two days instead of three, so that people are more encouraged to work here for the same rate because it will pay dividends, probably fine. If it is for the purpose of benefiting society and has no benefit to shareholders, maybe even then fine. If it's for the purpose of deliberately taking money from the shareholders and giving it to society, that is corporate waste. That is not permitted. So what are the court's views on corporate social responsibility? Well, the court appears to give two different treatments. The court defers to Ford's discretion about how to best price its cars, whether to expand its plant, whether to include a hospital on site. But it also refuses to accept his judgment that it needs to maintain cash. This is an inconsistent view. Right? I don't know how closely you read the case, but there's this real inconsistency to say, you can build your plant, but you need to give some of your money to shareholders. Well, I don't know, how much does the plant cost? Why is the court involved in this? The Michigan court might have been less concerned with shareholder rights and more concerned with other factors affecting the state. For example, competition in the auto industry. At this stage, the auto industry is proving to be a very important part of Illinois' 
economy. Potentially, by divesting funds from Ford to the Dodge brothers, it promoted competition in the industry. Maybe the court did this unusual thing to promote its own vision of what is right in society. Maybe they were concerned that a one company auto industry was not sustainable or might result in monopoly rents. I'm sorry, Michigan. The state of Michigan, not Illinois. The state of Michigan had a strong interest in maintaining its position at the forefront of auto manufacturing. And Ford's social vision seemed to threaten that. 